Hello and welcome to this installment of Making Sense. I'm Justin Gutwein and today we're going to be talking about predictive analytics, the technology that will hopefully replace Jerry showing up to the office every Tuesday with a robe and crystal ball claiming to be Nostro Jerris. I mean, you didn't even have the foresight to see how terrible of an idea that is. Now, B2B sellers and marketers can make all the educated guesses they want about accounts to target, where they are in the buying journey, what kind of messaging will be effective, and they do. But at the end of the day, that's really all it is, is just guessing. They may as well be filling out prospect Mad Libs. Hmm, Apple's gonna be a prospect. Go tell sales, they'll be so excited. So, enter predictive analytics. By its simplest definition, predictive analytics extracts information from data and uses it to predict trends and behavior patterns like new opportunities, upsells, cross-sells, and even customer churn. This is typically done through data modeling, machine learning, AI, data mining, and a bunch of other very technical sounding things. But today we're gonna to focus on the three key pieces that really drive predictive analytics. Intent data, historical data, and firmographic and technographic data, or what we more commonly refer to as ICP. I think firmographic's the one on the left. So let's start with intent data. There are two types of intent data that are collected and analyzed, first party and third party. Third party intent data is the anonymous behavior happening all across the internet. Everything from browsing trade sites to branded and generic keyword searches. So don't worry. We may know that you've been searching for cute cat figurines, but we don't know exactly who you are at this point. Now, first party intent data is fueled by known activities like visits to your website, watching a video, engaging with content. So this is obviously the really valuable stuff. Next, we have historical data. This is basically a huge repository of information that machine learning and AI can analyze to recognize behavioral patterns and then in turn predict behavior. They can kind of see the picture through the noise, kind of like those posters at the mall with the hidden sailboat. And third, we have the Ideal Customer Profile, or ICP. This is all the information that would make a company an ideal customer for you. Industry, location, size, eye color, astrological symbol, food allergies, you know, the normal stuff. So when you layer intent data on top of historical data, filter that through your ICP, you have a beautiful cake that, wait, what? Oh, sorry, wrong script. That bit is for baking sense, which I'm actually filming after this. Um, where was I? Anyway, when you have all those things powering predictive analytics, you can identify a target account list that is the perfect cross-section of showing intent to buy and are in your ICP. And it's so important because you don't wanna waste time and resources chasing down an ideal customer that is showing little to no intent. You might as well go back to filling out the prospect Mad Lib. And you don't wanna spend time with an account showing lots of intent because it may be too small of a company for your solution. That's kind of similar to those jerks that let a door-to-door -door salesperson do their whole five-minute pitch before telling them that, oh yeah, I don't even actually play golf. Oh, you no, know, that would have been good to know five minutes ago. Do you know how many doors I could have knocked on in the past five minutes? Why did I study art history? And so, by serving up that perfect cross-section of intent and ICP, predictive analytics allows your revenue teams to stop all the guesswork and prioritize marketing and sales efforts on accounts that are a fit on timing and intent. Finally, making Nostro Jaris leave that creepy costume at home. So, I hope this has been helpful. I'm Justin Gutwein. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.